Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video, we've got a couple things going on. The main thing that we're going to be talking about in this video is this unit here, which is installed up above my wood stove. This is a cylinder stove oven. It is new to this house. I've had it installed for about a month, and I'm going to do a review of this product. You know, is it something that's worth getting? Is it like an abomination that you'll regret ever putting in there? We're going to talk all about that. Before we get into that though, I've got two other things I want to cover. The first, is, I'm going to cover at the end of the video, but I want to let you know to stick around till the end if you're interested in uh, kind of a topic discussion about my, uh, my channel in general. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, this might be something that you would be wanting to engage on. If you are a hater of the channel, this uh, topic discussion would actually give you a lot of ammunition. Uh, I know there's at least like two or three people out there that really don't like me, uh, so if you guys want to stick around, uh, you know, I'll be uh, verbalizing some things that you could use against me later, so you may want to stick around for that. Uh, but before we get into any of this stuff, I wanted to talk about one of the great things about having a wood stove in the winter is that you can cook over it. It's going to heat your house, but you can also cook all sorts of things. What I'm uh, working on this morning, uh, this is some old applesauce. At the time of this recording, it is 2021. This applesauce I canned myself in uh, December of 2014. So this is, uh, it's getting pretty old. Whenever I, um, whenever I open up anything that I've canned myself, I like to uh, boil it, uh, to be perfectly frank, because I, you know, I'm a prepper, and whenever I can make some extra precautions to make something a little bit extra safe, I like to do it. Uh, one of the big concerns about when you're uh, canning anything is the idea of getting botulism spores in that, uh, into whatever you're canning. Now, uh, there's a whole topic discu uh, discussion about like how to do proper canning, and the pH things, and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to get into that. But one uh, safety procedure that you can use whenever you're going to be opening up a can, whether you canned it yourself or it came from the store, because, you know, there's always issues... Uh, you know, hear uh, periodically on the news about like, you know, uh, there was botulism in this batch of such and such or whatever. Uh, if you take this stuff, whatever you are looking to uh, eat and uh, boil it for a good five, ten minutes or so, even if there was botulism in there, the boiling is going to destroy all the toxins uh, that, you know, were present in there. And uh, that this isn't like some like fly-by-night kind of like uh, renegade, you know, crazy prepper kind of thing. This is on, you know, uh, you know regular government websites. You know, they'll talk about, uh, you know, doing this procedure where if you boil something for five to ten minutes at a rolling boil, it'll destroy all that toxin. So I, I tend to think it's a nice little safety procedure. Uh, another safety procedure, whenever I'm opening up my own canning jars, this is a, a bell, bell ball, I'm sorry, a ball canning jar. Whenever I'm opening them up, uh, you know, when you buy these things, the glass jars, they say that you can use them for a certain number of cycles before they crack. There are things you can do to make, to extend that, you know, that's a whole other topic. But one of the things is don't shock them. Don't put in scalding hot stuff if they're really cold. Uh, you know, that's one way of, uh, you know, making it so the glass will last longer. Uh, but the lids, when you buy the lids from Ball or whoever else, they are generally going to tell you these are single-use lids. You use them once and then you got to throw them out. Um, there are certain circumstances where they can get damaged, you know, that you got to make sure that the gasket around them is good. Uh, but uh, another way of damaging the lids is by denting them uh, when you take them off. And one way that I have found to avoid denting the lids is by taking a wooden spoon that has this little curved section in here and putting it just underneath the lid and using that to pop it up. Now, I had already popped this one up earlier. They don't come up that easy. But the idea is, is that you tuck it underneath and you do a little bit of uh, pull on it until you hear the vacuum release. And uh, what that's going to do is because you're distributing the, uh, the force uh, along this kind of whole curved surface there, it's going to reduce the chance of you making like a little kink in there and making that so that the lid doesn't work anymore. So that's just a little pro tip from uh, someone that's done it for a while. So uh, I just take this, put it right on the wood stove, and let this simmer for a little bit. My boy wanted to have some applesauce earlier uh, he asked for it and I said okay well I'll take some out of the pantry and uh, you can uh, have it once it once it boils a little bit right. another thing to save all the stuff in there I'll usually put a little bit of water in there and uh, flush it around and then dump that in there too make it all safe all right so cylinder stove right here I have been using this thing for just about a month now and I love it. It is wonderful. This is a cylinder stove made by uh, Cylinder Stoves of Chester, Utah. Here's their phone number right here. It's 800-586-3829. They put it right on the front there. I absolutely love this thing. 
It works super, super well. When I'm running the stove at kind of a normal temperature, which is like, you know, somewhere in the 450 to 500 range, the, uh, which is the case right now. Yeah, yeah, we're running right around that temperature right now for the wood stove. Uh, the oven is running at just about 400, a little more than 400 degrees. Uh, it stays a nice stable temperature as long as you have your wood stove running at a stable temperature. And if you know how to run a wood stove, that's what you're aiming for and that's where you're going to be most of the time. Uh, I absolutely love this thing. It's got this little uh, handle you can uh, grab so it doesn't overheat and burn your hand. Uh, just opens up like this and whenever I am running the stove but not cooking anything I'll just leave the door open a little bit just like that and that will it's like kind of having like an open oven in your house it will help to heat your house now if you're running an electric oven or something like that that's not a particularly efficient way of heating your house so you don't want to do that but with this it's free energy anyway anyway so uh, you know I will tend to just leave it open but in terms of actually using it for cooking things it works really really well like I said it kind of rides right around that 400 degree mark if you cut the heat to your wood stove you can get it down to like you know the 350 area one thing i've learned about baking and there's got a heck of a lot of people that are going to completely uh, contradict me on this is that a lot of the particulars don't matter that much you know if a recipe says 325 you know if it's 350 that's probably fine you know uh, if it's a little hotter uh you know what you're going to have a tendency of having happen is that like uh, the outside may get a little overheated before the inside fully cooks if you make your uh, you know if you're making something it's like a cake or something like that if you make it a little thinner you can have less of that kind of an issue if you make something a little bit bigger uh, you know where it's more distance between the outside surface and the inside surface you know uh, you, you may have more of a problem along those lines but generally speaking you know the temperatures you can kind of have a little bit of play with them I do solar cooking all the time and it's 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 really difficult to have a lot of uh, control over solar cooking because the whole charm of solar cooking is you set up a solar oven, uh, like point it south and kind of walk away and forget about it. So you're not there to kind of keep checking the temperature and everything. So, uh, you know, I've had a lot of experience with cooking things at temperatures that are just kind of like, whatever, you know, it's like, yeah, 300, 400, somewhere in there, I'm sure it's fine. And, you know, honestly, I don't really have a lot of tr trouble with things. So I think temperature is something that oftentimes can be kind of flexible and you know while they have an exact number in a book because they have to put an exact number in the book you know it, it doesn't always have to be exactly that and if you're running a little hot you know just expect for your stuff to cook a little faster and or maybe get a little crunchier on the outside but generally speaking this oven runs at a really useful temperature somewhere in that 300 uh i'm sorry 350 to 400 kind of range and uh, i've had a lot of great success with it um in terms of baking bread uh, this is a bread that I baked just yesterday. I did not bake this bread in this oven. This is my sourdough bread. I, and I was really kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to. The reason I didn't bake it in the oven is because uh, it's November here, but it's been uncharacteristically warm. I'm outside in shorts uh, and there's like no snow and it's like, you know, 60 degrees and sunny out lately. So we, we haven't really been running the wood stove very much this season. Uh, yesterday was one of those days, so I didn't, uh, I didn't run the wood stove. But when I have baked bread, in this oven here, it is it has been the best bread that I have personally ever baked. Uh, there's something about the way that the oven kind of wraps around it, the way that the heat radiates into it, that you get that really nice kind of uh, like you knock on the bread and you hear that kind of uh, hollow. Well, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The difference between like Wonder Bread and like a really nice loaf. This thing makes really nice loaves of bread. Uh, I've uh, yeah, I've cooked lasagna in it. That came out really well. I've reheated all sorts of things in it. Really great device. I absolutely love it. I, it costs a couple hundred bucks, the, uh, you know, which is you know, it's an investment there, but it is free cooking all winter long as long as I'm heating my house. So the energy savings alone is wonderful. And it's great to be able to cook things when you are in a situation where maybe you don't have grid power, you don't have propane or whatever. You know, it, it's, it's good to be able to have a wood stove and keep from freezing to death, but you also want to eat. And while you can cook lots of things on the wood stove, right now I'm heating up that applesauce, I've got uh, you know some some uh, tea water here uh, going. I'm always trying to cook things on top of the wood stove. I'm going to take that off because that's a whistling kettle. <laughs> it's going to get irritating. Um, but uh, you know it's great to be able to actually use it for other things. So I think that this is a really great asset. And there's only one downside to these, and that they and that is that they're they're kind of difficult to get. Uh, I was 
I'd like to say that I was on a waiting list to get this for a couple of years, uh, except for the company that makes these, uh, Chester uh, uh, Cylinder Stoves uh, out of Chester, Utah. They don't even really have a waiting list. Uh, they just have a website and you kind of go there and see if there are any available. I'm going to pull a link down in the description below uh, to where I got this and, you know, it'll probably be the same kind of situation where you go there and it'll say that there aren't any. But if you're really interested in something like this, you know, just kind of keep popping back and forth and, you know, Every, every week or so, you know, kind of check. That's what I did. I eventually got one and I stored it. I had it in storage for two years before I installed here because I knew how hard they were to get. So as soon as they were available, I bought it. I was moving. I was in transition. This house wasn't even built yet. I bought this thing so I knew that I could install it when I had it. But wonderful, wonderful device. Free cooking, uh, you know, and it's just, it's, it's a really great asset to have. So I would highly recommend it. And, uh, you know, just cooking over stoves in general, I think is just wonderful because you're heating your house, you're cooking food, you're boiling water, you're making soup, you're doing all these other things, and you're doing it with scrap sticks that you find outside. So, very happy with that. <laughs> other topic, for all you uh, fans of the channel that have been watching for a while, for all you haters of the, fa of the channel that are looking for that ammunition that I promised you, this is what I wanted to talk about uh, at the end of this video, is where do you see this channel going from here? And where I'm coming at uh, that question from is, um, I've been feeling a little bit lately since I finished this place that I'm in, um, and I even did a video about it recently about the idea of people who are really into prepping being kind of out of touch with the realities of the world. That uh, you know, I, I said in the video, you know, if you're looking for somebody to uh, give you some guidance about how to improve your life, and you you know, we're all living through this situation where, you know, the world is kind of going crazy and there's shortages and there's violence and there's, you know, geopolitical unrest and economic issues and all these kinds of things. If you're looking for someone to give you advice about how to improve your life in regards to all those things, you should look for someone who does kind of seem disconnected from a lot of that type of thing. Because if you are, you know, going and getting advice from someone that's right in there with you and having all the same kind of problems that you can have, you know, I'm not saying that they can't offer any advice, but, uh, you know, much better to get advice from people who have successfully kind of escaped from that. Um, but there's a downside to that, and that is that the things that I'm focused on right now uh, kind of feel like they're not the same kinds of things that a lot of other people at the moment are focused on. Uh, I, I get a sense from the world that a lot of people are nervous about shortages, and they're nervous about, you know, food supply, and nervous about violence, uh, and from my perspective, I've got several years of food set up here. You know, we'd have to have a really, a really long extended crisis for the food supply issues to really impact me in any particularly irksome way. In terms of violence, I live out in the countryside. That's, you know, as things get worse and worse, and hopefully they don't, but you know, it seems like they may, you know, those problems are gonna spread more and more uh, out into rural areas. But at the moment, none of that stuff really impacts me. So it's not really stuff that I'm actively working at right now. Uh, in terms of, you know, just the general uh, preparing for stuff, a lot of the stuff that I, I feel like most people need to work on right now is stuff that I, I've kind of already done. And I, I like to make my videos about stuff that I'm currently doing, things that I'm working on, new things that I'm trying out. And a lot of this stuff I feel like might not be all that useful to a lot of people. I mean, it's great for me and you know, for anyone that gets to a point where they can have a wood stove and they're thinking, you know, my wood stove is great, but I'd really like to be able to cook over it. You know, you get to this stage, but if you don't even have a wood stove and you can't put up a chimney in your place because you live in like some city somewhere, a video like this, is completely useless to you. So I'm wondering what is of interest to you guys. You guys who've watched my channel for a while know that, you know, you know what I've been doing, you know that I built this whole place, uh, you know, uh, to kind of create, you know, like sort of like the ultimate prepper sort of space, but it's more than that. It's really the ultimate enjoy your life kind of space. You guys know what I've been doing. What are you interested in that, uh, I could be sharing more with you guys because like I said, I like to share stuff that I'm actively currently working on, but if that stuff is kind of at this level and a lot of other people are kind of struggling just to get up to this level and that's great. I mean, I started way below that, you know, and we all start way below that, you know, it's a rung of ladders uh, or a, a, a ladder of rungs, I guess would be the better way to say that. Uh, and you know, we're all at different positions on it. You know, I, I, I kind of, you know, put my hand up here for myself and I say a lot of people are here, but there are people that are well beyond my, my pay grade for that. Uh, and I, I, 
I want to continue to share with you guys, but I don't want it to be stuff like, you know, ovens that you can install over wood stoves that you don't even have. So what are your thoughts on what would be useful for you guys based on my perspective of where I am at the moment? I certainly don't mind sharing things that are stuff that I worked on many years ago, but I'm wondering what your concerns are right now. What is stuff that you would like to get some insight on, stuff that I maybe have already worked on, whether it's you know solar energy or water or any kind of access issues. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because I'm gonna to continue to share this kind of stuff because I know there are people out there that do have a wood stove and they're interested in something like this. But I'd like to also know, you know what you're interested in. And I, and I don't wanna dumb the whole channel down and be like, What's the top 10 things you can put in a bug out bag? You know, uh, you know I, 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 I have more respect for you guys than that to like just totally make it all entry level. But I'm not sure where a lot of you guys are. I know that my channel has about somewhere around like 11,000 subscribers, a little bit more than that. And you know, most of the videos that I make get like 300 views. So you know, that tells me that the vast majority of people that subscribe to my channel are not interested in this kind of stuff. I think a lot of them were interested in the Alien Invasion series, and I'm doing that right now, but nobody's watching that. Uh, either, I think just because YouTube doesn't send out notifications on, any, uh, on anything, I know that thousands of people subscribe to the channel wanting to get Alien Invasion episode updates, and that's just not happening because of the way that YouTube runs things. But for you guys who do watch the channel, what do you want to hear about? What would help you most? That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.